Hey everybody, welcome back to Nico Brothers. In this episode, we get to work on our 2017 Ford Mustang, and man, this thing is hot. Introducing the all new thermal camera for the Android from Top Don, TC001. It's got a 256 by 192 IR high resolution thermal imaging camera. Optimized temperature accuracy, works with smartphones and tablets, and your PC. So you tired of getting burned? Boom, turn on your thermal imaging and then you can see exactly how hot it is, what's hot, what's not, and then just be a lot more careful. Pretty sweet, like I said, Mustang is definitely super hot. I mean, check it out guys. You can clearly tell the engine itself is very hot and all around it. Man, this thing's definitely awesome to have. This thing comes with a solid carrying bag, an adapter cord for multifunctional adapter cable, thermal imaging camera itself, and a little cleaning cloth, which is nice to have. It is awesome how small and portable this is. I mean, honestly, put it in your pocket and don't really worry about it. Nothing big and bulky. It's crazy how technology is getting so small nowadays. You could literally see things that is negative 20 Celsius to 550 Celsius. That's four degrees Fahrenheit to 1022 Fahrenheit. So man, that's pretty insane. Definitely a huge range of temperature. You could also customize the temperature range that you want to monitor. So if you're trying to get colder stuff, you know, just set it there. If you want stuff that's really hot, you could change the sensitivity to it and just customize it to what you need. There's honestly so many different functionalities you could use for this thing. Imagine you're outside, you're hunting or something, boom, thermal imaging, see what's all around you because it could work at night, day, it doesn't even need light. Also, I'm building a house, so it'll be kind of cool to see if there's any gaps, any hot air leaving, escaping, cold air coming in. Plenty of things to be able to use this. So that is definitely sweet to be able to tell what's hot and what's not. So make sure you check a link down below and get yourself one today. But let's go ahead and move forward and get this thing stripped, taken down, taken apart, and make sure there's no water inside. Even though I don't smell anything and everything's working, it is still a flood vehicle. So we do want to take it apart. We're getting the seats out front, back, carpet completely off, down to the bare metal, check the connections, make sure nothing's corroding. And we don't want any future problems with it because somebody's gonna be driving this for a while. It's only got 40,000 miles on it. So yeah, we're gonna do it right and get it done. So hopefully we won't have any surprises underneath the carpet. I am hoping that the water just, you know, barely got to the tires and just left and they salvaged it out. But like I said, we are taking that carpet out to double check. Hopefully no surprises. So the first thing you do is definitely disconnect the battery and then I'm going to work on the back seats and work my way up. Or I guess I could start with the front seats and work my way back. Either way, get it done. What? No, 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 no. Oh boy. Dang guys, so bad news. The passenger seat is not moving back and forth, so I can't get to the bolts. Man, I checked the driver's side. I was smelling underneath it, but I did not thoroughly go through the passenger side. So that sucks. Wow. Dang, that went from like me taking everything apart in like 30 minutes to, to a very long time. It could be a really big nightmare to get these power seats out if they're not working because the bolts are usually underneath you to slide the seat forward get the ones in the back move it back and forth and kind of thing so uh, but fortunately it is going up and down so i don't think water got in there too much but i could barely like start smelling a little bit on this side it's very faint but i think water did get a little bit on the passenger side so the motor isn't working side to side but it is going up and down so maybe i'll be able to just to lift the chair up high enough and get this thing unbolted ah Dang, it's kind of a bummer, but hey, you know, that's why we take it apart. That's why we dig into it to find all the issues and get it done and get it repaired and get it beautiful. Whew. Oh boy. 
So I was able to actually lift it up all the way. And you could tell I got one bolt out right there and I should be able to get to the other one. So <laughs> that's really good news. Man, there's so many electronics going on underneath the seat. Check out how many computers there is. That's insane. Cause you got up, down, back and forth, lumbar support, all sorts of things, cooled seats, heated seats. So these are definitely high dollar. Hopefully just my little motor in the bottom going side to side at the replace. Other than that, I hope it's good, but we'll take it apart. We'll go through it thoroughly, check all the connections. All right, so these are definitely some nice, beautiful leather chairs with a lot of functionality. Let's check it out. So this is the passenger side. Get a nice clear view underneath what is going on with here. So check it out guys, Just right away we got a module, another module, another computer. Pretty sure this is for the tilt up and down, which luckily was doing great. But that is the motor right there that slides and you could tell there was some corrosion. But the water level didn't go bad because this computer looks fine. Let's take out the wires and check it out. So taking these clips out, as you could tell, no green, no corrosion, just nice healthy connections. Nothing going on there either. Don't see anything. You would just see a bunch of corrosion already. If there was electricity and power and salt water, it would start eating up and kind of, you would get that look right there on here. So luckily that's good. Like I said, this guy's working, so he's good. I'm seeing a little bit of rust on chairs is actually really normal because they don't paint those parts underneath and they just naturally start doing that corroding. That's that pump, I guess. Man, there's definitely so much under this thing. So the higher the water line goes, the more expensive, more parts you have to replace. Luckily, this one's straight in the bottom. Even though this is the main connection right here, it looks really good too. Very clean, no corrosion. Nice. Whew, that definitely gave me a scare, but I'm lucky that the position where it was at and being able to lift it up, we were able to get all four bolts out without having to grind it, rip it apart, because I've had to literally just cut chairs in half to get them out before, so. That is awesome, really good news. Oh, we're still gonna put connection spray on every single one of them, clean them up, just in case, any prevention, you know, since we have it all apart. It's totally safe for the wires. And I'm gonna look into some more products against salt water, because a lot of people drive up north where they put salt on the road and that stuff gets underneath. So there's some spray, some preventive and restoration products out there to help clean and secure your car. So we'll definitely do that too. Probably go on eBay and replace it. Looks like there's a part number right there and this whole little assembly should be able to get replaced. So we'll definitely get that on order. Hopefully just replace this piece and our chair is good, but let's keep digging, especially on that passenger side. I wanna take it all apart and hopefully won't find any more hidden damage but who knows so obviously some water did get inside but hopefully it's not too bad that salt water is no joke all right all right let's keep going time for the back seat and then center council and save some time. That was actually surprisingly a lot to take off the center council piece. It came off in two pieces. I watched some YouTube videos how to do it. So there's a lot of good resources out there how to take it apart, but not the end of the world. But I do need to get my carpet, so that's why I had to take it off. Man, there's a lot of electronics, a lot of wires, a lot of stuff going on. So get a little baggy, save all my bolts. But moving forward, getting this carpet taken apart.
All right, all right. Instantly got my carpet out, no big deal at all. So I found a couple spots that are a bit moist. And honestly, <laughs> my driver's seat without the floor mats, my feet were kind of, that place was a little more moist than the other side, but there is a little bit on this side. So I got my baking soda. I'm gonna spray baking soda all over this thing, especially in the underneath it on this side and let it sit for about 48 hours with a fan on it. So really let it air dry, get this thing cleaned up, make sure nothing, you know, is growing on there. And the inside of the car, I'm gonna put the dehumidifier in there, close all the windows and also for about 48 hours, let it just get any water, any moisture, any cracks soaked up. Wow guys, so this car to be branded as a water flood is pretty crazy because, I mean, look at that. A hair, like barely, barely any water came inside. It's literally left your windows open, could have got more soaked than that, but hey, I'm happy. You know, you do find that rare gem once in a while, so totally stoked about it. Like I said, I am going to put the dehumidifier in here, make sure I get all the moisture out and just let it sit with the dehumidifier for like 48 hours, windows closed and just get all that moisture out. So that should be good for it. Pretty happy with it. Got some aftermarket speaker wires going on. That's pretty cool. Seen them in the back, but unfortunately they took the box. So that's gone, but this is looking good. That is raised up. So our main electronics, there's nothing really down here, which is nice too. I didn't see anything in there dry hair, just like a little moist, I would say, but not bad. That was a great result. So like I said, let's go ahead and close our windows, get that dehumidifier in there and let that thing run. There's a dehumidifier. I got some more baking soda down there. Vacuum all that up later, even though it's not bad for it, but let it dehumidify and do its thing. Nice, got it all sealed up. Might take a little bit, but we'll get it all dried up so it's not even moist anymore. Nice. And alrighty guys, just like that, it's been over 48 hours. Dehumidifier has been running continuously. Go ahead and stop that. Let's check if there's any water inside. Where's that power button? There it is. It feels heavy, but I don't know. Inside, install all that baking soda. I'm gonna vacuum it up, go through there, get some degreaser, wipe it all down because I don't want anything left over. Let's check in here. Hey, there is some water. Look at that. Not much, but hey, we were able to get out some water with a dehumidifier. So. Yeah, not much. So it wasn't closed and just really just drying it out. So that's good news. Happy about that. And the baking soda also probably helped as well absorb stuff. Trunk looks great. Moving right along to over here to the carpet side. Just let it breathe basically. Had the fan running for 48 hours. This was the section that actually had a little bit of water. Everything else was really nice. You can kind of tell that the baking soda is already starting to bring it up. So I'm going to put it down, vacuum it all up front and back. Make sure I get it all cleaned up. Ready for install.
right guys, I just want to take this time to say make sure you're subscribed, make sure you got that notification bell on. And like I said, we love reading your comments down below about these flooded vehicles. We just want to show that there is potential for salt water floods, even though you know people are scared about it. They're like, hey, stay away, never in a million years. It just depends. There are some good cars out there. But unfortunately, it's all the time for this episode. Make sure you guys stay tuned. We will get this thing back together and we will get it, you know, going. So it's not over yet, but it's all the time we have. Like I said, thanks so much for all the support. Catch you next time.